Greetings everyone, and welcome back to Pep Organ. Today I'm going to be discussing what kind of music we should be playing in the church. This video is partly drawn on my own personal experiences, and also on what I've seen and perceived from other churches that I've been to. This video should be relevant mostly to church organists, but it should also be helpful if you just want to understand my idea of music philosophy. First off, let's just talk about the purpose of organ music at the church. It's important to note that playing at a church is not the same as playing for an organ recital. As an organist working at a church, you must be willing to accept the fact that without that church, you would not have the chance to play at all. Therefore, just like an employer, you need to try and understand the church and fulfill its needs as best as you can. Now, I want to stress this very firmly. Also, being a church organist is not about showing off how well you can play. It's not about creating the loudest noise possible at the end of the service and drawing attention to yourself. The main reason people attend church is to worship. We have to remember this. It's not to listen to the organ voluntary. So your music should always assist with prayer. Organism means not an end. If you treat yourself like an entertainer, you may lose the respect of the congregation entirely. Or, in an even worse scenario, you may win their admiration. And of course, this would undermine the whole purpose of the church it would undermine the authority of the clergy. And we have to remember that there's a time and place for entertainment, and it's not the church. Now, I know this might be a disappointment to some of you organists who just want to pursue your passion and play whatever you want. But I think that this mindset is frankly selfish, and there's, it's not productive to anyone. Our goal should be to enhance the service that we're in. That's why it's called a service, because we are serving. Of course, everything I've said to this point is just a generalization. So at this point, I want to talk about how churches differ from each other by giving a few different examples of how the organ might be used to enhance that form of service. Because we have to ask ourselves whenever we're an organist, what are the goals of your church? If you're employed, you should remember that nearly everyone except you is volunteering their own time to be there. So in other words, it's really their community that, they're, that you are contributing towards. I'm going to now look at three different examples to illustrate my case. And as I go, have to think about the church that you play at and think about how these examples might have reflection or similarity to your church. Let's start with the example of what we might call a typical small suburban church. Their primary goal is probably to create a strong community, a welcoming, friendly environment. They do like having organ in their service, but they're more interested in socialization rather than organ music. Therefore, the organ music that you choose should reflect these needs it should be light, accessible, and pleasing. More importantly, your postlude shouldn't be 10 minutes because that might be enjoyed by two or three people, but it's not really bringing the community together. It's more dividing them. One of the big highlights for people at community churches is to be in the community. And that means the morning tea afterwards. So your organ voluntary is directly impacting on their time with others. If you set a good precedent for your organ postludes, keeping them at two or three minutes, for example, then you may actually find that your congregation is more open to attending an organ recital when you do want to give one. And that's the time when, of course, you can do whatever you want. That's your recital, and they voluntarily choose to come to that. They don't voluntarily choose to listen to a five or ten minute organ piece at the end of each service. For our second example, let's talk about a large cathedral in a city. It's frequently visited by tourists, and as the nature of its ginormous size, the community is just not there, it's not as tight-knit. As a result, you're li less likely to really know what the congregation actually wants to hear. For a large church, the first thing to consider is actually the acoustic of the building you're in. Um, if you, there's a lot of reverberation, you must acknowledge that organ works that have a very dense contrabuntal kind of nature, or too much uh, precise rhythmic activity, it might not have the effect that you intend it to have in the service. It might not work at all, sound like a blur. I know that it's disappointing that we just want to go into any church and we want to play any piece of music, but we have to accept the limitations, and acoustic is one of them. So we must not play music that causes too much reverberation and makes it impossible to understand what's going on. Now, of course, if you're an organist at a cathedral, especially a cathedral with a very big reputation, there may be an expectation from you, uh, from the clergy maybe, or from the broader community, that you must perform organ music of very high quality every week. Now you need to remember that while this is true and you must keep quality high, we have to also remember that the congregation, and this is the people that we're all here to serve, the thousands of people compared to us small music teams, they're not classically trained experts. There may be cathedrals where people are very strongly drawn towards classical music, 
but they may be places where they just don't know anything about it. They're just regular people, if we can call them that. Therefore, I recommend that we don't perform academic music. And by that, I mean music that requires multiple listenings and careful analysis to appreciate. Instead, you should play music that is of high quality, but that will be appreciated by a general audience. So we're talking about Mendelssohn, the great works of J.S. Bach and Gilmont. They're a good start. But music by obscure composers is absolutely fine too. Now, even at a cathedral, you're going to have regular attendees. And for those people, of course, you should always be adding more to your repertoire, playing pieces that require more attention here and there. But I'm just saying that you shouldn't make every week an academic exercise that the listeners have to sort of endure. It's already bad enough in a cathedral to build, try and build community. And by pushing them out with some loud, obnoxious music, you're not going to help anything at all. One final thing to remember about cathedrals is that they also serve as a role model for the diocese. So your music should really communicate the goals and the larger goals of your city and your city community. If in doubt, playing music that's prayerful and meditative, I find, is always a good option. We always need more calm, relaxing music at church, not big bombastic. Now the third example I'm going to give is a church that really does appreciate the importance of liturgy and always getting things absolutely right. This is the kind of church where the congregation may have a really strong preference for traditional music and historical music, of course. In this instance, you should pay very close attention to the other music that's taking place in the service. We're talking about the hymns, the psalms, and of course, if there's a choir, then the choral music as well, and the communion setting. You should take cues from what kind of music they choose and then shape your music program, your organ music, to that. That creates a really cohesive, satisfying experience for the congregation. You should also try and gauge the situation in the building at the time. During communion, for instance, if you don't have something uh, prescribed, you may want to consider playing a very soft improvisation on a certain day, maybe something a bit bigger on another day, and maybe uh, it might be just worth not having any music at all. We have to exercise restraint as organists. We can't just keep feeding people music all the time. Some of the most beautiful services I've played for have had almost no organ music at all. So it's really special when used right. Now in one of these churches I'm describing, kind of high church style, you must not try and draw attention to yourself. You'll notice that everyone never draws attention to themselves, whether it's the thurifers or the choir or the clergy. Um, and that should be the same for you. You should play your organ voluntaries and your preludes in a way that's respectable and refined. Don't crash around the keys or make atonal music or anything that might upset that really precious reverent atmosphere. That's why people are coming. It's also possible that people may want to pray after the service in the church. So your organ voluntary may be disrupting that and making it harder for them. So don't play anything too loud. When a composer instructs to use tutti organ, which happens all the time in organ repertoire, I don't think you should take this too literally. You, sh you should definitely take some liberties with that. And your respect should not be due to the composer's wishes, but to your congregation. Always keep that in mind. Now, I hope that you find this kind of advice helpful, and maybe you have your own perspective, which I'd love to see in the comments down below. But if you do follow some of the advice that I gave, I think that the congregation will gain more respect for you, and that's what we want. We want them to respect you, to appreciate the work that you're doing, and of course, show up to your organ concerts, you know? We want, we want to play our great music as well, so that's what that chance is for. But church needs to be a fine balance of not showing off, not putting your own tastes into other people's listening, um, and respecting the building that you're in and the kind of community that you're working for. So keep that in mind. Please like and subscribe to Pep Organ, and I hope to see you in the next one.